a number of pharmacologic agents are available to, for insomnia. And I think the, the use of these agents is appropriate in, in, in older individuals. Um, and generally speaking, they're appropriate uh, if the treatment of the comorbid condition has really not been successful in eliminating the insomnia, or if direct treatment of the insomnia with cognitive behavioral techniques has not been effective. Um, the, the agents that are, that are used fall into two general classes. Number one, those that are indicated specifically for insomnia, and number two, those are not indicated for insomnia but used for insomnia off-label. So in the second category, we have many agents such as the antipsychotic agents, antidepressants, low doses, um, and, and uh, even anti-epileptic agents that have sedating qualities that are used for the treatment of insomnia. The reason they're used that way is that many of these are, are cheap, readily available, and there's a perception that their side effect profile is more, is more desirable. What we do find, though, unfortunately, is that in many of these agents, for example, trazodone, uh, low-dose toxapin, or I apologize, uh, regular-dose toxapin, uh, mirtazapine, and so on, although they do have a sedating quality, uh, the effects seem to be inconsistent for insomnia, and because of their long-acting uh, effects, long half-lives, they may have negative effects on daytime uh, cognitive and other measures producing daytime sleepiness, possible impairment in memory, judgment, and even confusion and delirium. The American Geriatric Society has recommended that these antidepressants uh, not be utilized for the treatment of insomnia and, especially, and, and has also recommended that antipsychotics not be utilized for the treatment of insomnia uh, in this fashion because of the problems which I just talked about as well as the metabolic burden associated with some of these, for example, uh, agents like, um, uh, like uh, quetiapine. Now, let's go on to the prescribed agents, or rather the agents indicated for insomnia that are prescribed. They fall into a few categories. Number one, there are those that are GABA receptor agonists, and number two, there are those that are agonists or antagonists of other neurotransmitter systems. So, the, the, uh, to backtrack for a second, the sleep, the, the process of sleep and wakefulness is controlled by uh, two general systems. Number one, the GABAergic system, which is the system which promotes sleep. And number two, the ascending reticular activating system, which is the system uh, that controls arousal and wakefulness. And that is innervated by histamine, dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine, and acetylcholine. There's another um, neurotransmitter in the wakefulness system that's called the orexin system. It's also called the hypocretin system. And that system is an interesting one in that, it, it, number one, it promotes wakefulness to some extent, but it also seems to regulate the transition between sleep and wakefulness in a very interesting fashion so that in the, it regulates sleep to make sure that people who are asleep stay asleep, and it regulates wakefulness to make sure that people who are awake stay awake. When that system is disrupted, there is a syndrome called narcolepsy, which is characterized by too much sleep during the day and not enough sleep at night. So disrupted sleep at night. So to summarize, there are two large systems controlling why we sleep and how we sleep. The sleep promoting system, which is GABAergic, and the arousing system, which is comprised of a number of neurotransmitters. And these two systems are in balance with each other. The sleeping pills that are available act at one, or, one, or, one of these systems. So the benzodiazepines act at the GABAergic system. They're the GABA receptor agonists, essentially. By promoting the activity of GABA, they promote sleep. And they work very well. A number of studies have shown that they're effective for the treatment of insomnia. The issue that the, exists with these agents are, are, is two, the issues are twofold. Number one, some of them have long half-lives and produce daytime sedation. The older benzodiazepines, for example, quazepam, uh, 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 flurazepam, and so on, Temazepam. These are longer or intermediate acting agents which can produce daytime sedation, especially in older individuals who are metabolized, who metabolize these drugs more slowly and have a greater degree of um, uh, end organ sensitivity to the effects of these agents. It's for this reason that the American Geriatric Society has recommended that these long 
acting and intermediate, and even short acting benzodiazepines, um, not be utilized for the treatment of insomnia, older individuals, because of their, their recognition that they seem to have a greater array of systemic side effects. The other set of uh, benzodiazepine receptor agonists are the so-called a selective benzo benzodiazepine receptor agonists, and those are the so-called Z drugs, or zaloplon, zolpidem, uh, and uh, zolpiclone. Uh, zolpidem is also available in an extended release version. Um, and these agents may be a bit more desirable than the older benzodiazepines in that they produce fewer side effects possibly, uh, but they also are shorter acting and in general uh, are limited in their effect to the nighttime for the most part. They either promote sleep latency, uh, they either, I'm sorry, they either promote uh, the entry into sleep by helping sleep latency problems, or they help people s sleep for the entire night, or both. And the way we select them is whether they're, the, the patient has a problem with falling asleep or staying asleep, depending on the, medic, de depending on the medication's profile. Unfortunately, the, the American Geriatric Society has recommended these also not be used. Uh, for older individuals because of, the, again, the recognition that they may also be responsible for daytime sleepiness problems, falls possibly, motor impairment, uh, dr uh, falling asleep while driving, and so on and so forth. Interestingly, these drugs have also been associated with something uh, uh, described as amnestic behavior, where individuals can get up out of bed and enact many of their, um, uh, or rather engage in activity while walking, sleepwalking, for example, even sleep driving, and hurt themselves. Those types of behaviors have been rare over the past 20 years or so, but because they can cause catastrophic consequences with these drugs, it seems, the, uh, there's a degree of caution there, and the FDA now has recommended that these drugs not be used in individuals who have uh, parasomnias of this nature. So I think it's important to educate patients on the use of these benzos. Um, the, one of the most important of which is that they should take them right at bedtime and go to sleep as opposed to taking them a little bit before bedtime and, be, and walking around. The, m many elderly begin to have motor imbalance without being aware of the cognitive effects that the drug may be having on them and the motor effects. So take the drug at bedtime, go right to bed, uh, don't mix with alcohol, uh, which seems to have a negative or uh, which seems to reinforce amnestic behavior and the respiratory compromise, and, and uh, not to mix with other sedating compounds as well as much as possible. Uh, third, uh, to warn older individuals and anybody who takes these medications that they may develop, uh, if they do develop some, if they do develop parasomnia behavior, getting out of bed, walking out of bed to discontinue the drug right away and call the physician. Uh, fourth, uh, to tell the physician at, at all times if they develop new medical conditions which may impact the drug, in, impact the patient negatively if mixed with the drug, and of course to tell the doctor anytime they have a new prescription for another medication.